Hi guys, so today I want to talk about space bandages in chess and how to use them because space by itself is not such a big deal. It's like you can't win just by having more space. And first of all, let's talk about how space is defined. So right now, let's take a look at this position where white has a pawn on e5. So white has more central space because the pawns define how many lines the pieces get. So right now, white has all of this space, so which means central space and kingside space for the white pieces. And you can think about space as pawns promising squares for the pieces of their own color. So this pawn is promising that this whole thing over here is gonna be ours, you know? And black has, for example, a pawn on d4 and c5. So what does that mean? These pawns are promising the black pieces like the black rook and the black queen and bishop that all these squares will be there. So right now black has the space advantage on the queen side and the left center and white has the king side and the right center so the board is in a way split in half and it's a question of who can use their space better with the pieces now by the way before we go on space by itself is not a good thing because if you can't keep it if the pawns are just there and starting to be pushed they can also be overextended if they have no piece support so the pawns are nothing without the pieces and the pieces are nothing without the pawns in a way because if the pawns are back over here then the pieces can't do much can they because they just get kicked by the enemy space and the enemy pawns right so the pieces and pawns have to coexist and help each other okay now if black pawns are really really advanced and they get supported by the rook now we have a force to be reckoned with right and in this game let's take a look at how white tries to get more and more space and eventually uses it to tie down black and win okay so it's white to play and white says can I get some more space on the king side maybe I can create some problems for the king of yours how about that and then black says no thank you let's make sure you don't go up to h6 because I don't want you there being an annoying nail so white says no problem let's get to h5 anyways and then we'll go from there all right and now if black takes then we'll win back this pawn and then this guy becomes a weakness so black doesn't want to get double pawns, even if it is a free pawn, it's not a good free pawn, right? So black just says, let's just see what happens, I'll just wait. Okay, so white tries to create some problems, maybe we get more space and the f pawn can start moving up with the help of the pieces who are once again supporting the pawns, right? So then black has no plan or at least isn't using that spatial advantage because these pawns are just sitting there and doing nothing. They should be getting pushed eventually if black can create some sort of counterplay because clearly black is not gonna attack here where he's a basically a sitting duck. So white says can I get some more space and black says no I'm gonna fight you on this diagonal but the diagonal by itself is blocked off so you can't really use that space or this diagonal at all it's kind of useless in a way so white just goes back because at some point the knight may be useful somewhere else I don't know g3 to support f5 or squares like that so we're not sure if you want to trade right away queen goes away and right away we trade off pawn so that the evil queen doesn't get us. Well, after the trade, we start piling on the F and the E files because we are threatening to expand in space. So we're gonna kick back the black pieces and get more space for ourselves later on with the pawns. But we have to be careful because the king also needs his roof. So if the roof is to go up as it is doing here, then the white pieces have to be right behind the king supporting him, making sure no stranger comes through in, into the house of the king okay and so black says let me stop that but when he plays that he makes sure that there is no expansion with f5 so he kind of secures against that problem but then there are now weak squares that we can use and who do we use for outposts like d6 and f6 if he gets the knight you are correct and so the knight would love to end up on f6 someday and just the threat can be stronger than the execution as Mikhail Chigorin once told us, and that's why the knight jumps in right away, says, can I go here? What about there? How do you like me now? And so the bishop doesn't like that, which is why he has to trade off the knight. But then we get even more space by kicking away the black queen and creating the threat of f5 later on, getting our pawns even further and securing more squares for our pieces to attack their king. 
so the rooks line up and make sure that they're ready for f5 with the spin going on the g file so everything is just about ripe for the breakthrough but first let's improve our pieces some more right let's give them some more chocolate bars so the queen will go back maybe we lost the queen what she's doing here because clearly she's a bit awkward don't you think having basically no squares to talk of at the moment and so maybe we can even chop her let's see if that happens so the king goes away and we say maybe we'll chop your queen next turn the queen will have to go here and then oops rook h4 the queen is trapped and so by creating that threat we force them to push this pawn allowing us to get even more space because if we just push the pawn everything gets traded off traded off traded it off and when the pawns are gone at the end of all of that that's just a rook end game where space doesn't mean anything because there's no pieces that can use the spatial advantage and then it's a question of is the pawn a pass pawn is or is it a victim for the black king who's gonna come in and just pick it up as a apple from an apple tree so now black has to play there and now we don't go into an end game we want to keep the pieces on if we have a spatial advantage we don't want to trade anything and so now we start pushing and getting even better pawns and even more advanced ones as well so now we play f6 and now they're really tied down by this protected passer on f6 who's just an amazing pawn it's a nail for the king to worry about it's stopping the rooks from getting the f-file and it's securing all the space for our rooks and now if we can push it further that may be good but then it's not protected by a pawn anymore so maybe we want to keep it here for now and not push it further because we already got this much space for ourselves so let's be happy at that and let's switch somewhere else so the queen goes away the queen gets us some questions and first we repeat the moves and then we switch to the new side of the board because before doing anything here we're not in a hurry right so we want to focus on the other side where we can get the space as well right so then the queen comes in and says first of all maybe i'll go here second of all maybe i'll go there in some cases if the rook leaves for example so right now we're just tying black down and when black is tied down now we can switch to that weakness of yours did you forget about your isolated e6 pawn and when the king goes away okay let's get some more space and this time we'll make sure that our pawns create problems for their pawns even though they have the queen side pawn majority it doesn't mean that much here because the pieces can't use it because it's not like this rook is coming in, it's too busy protecting against the f6 pawn, just like the queen who's in the middle of nowhere. So then the black rook on c7 can't really do much for herself. And now we fix the pawns, we make sure they don't go anywhere. A healthy move to play is b3 at some point, make sure that the queen side majority doesn't go anywhere. And also, while protecting our pawns, of course, after which we can start finally creating problems like a5 and making weaknesses for them it's almost like a minority attack where we have three pawns against four so we can create an isolated pawn and perhaps an open a file in the future while their pieces are tied down why is space so important is because their pieces have less mobility than our pieces which means that they can't move as fast i can go from left to right from right to left in like one move their pieces are so clumsy one two three you know four five six they're just not as fast so we can switch over from one side to the next quicker so like that for example we say wait queen where are you going where do you think you're going and now let's make sure that pawns don't go anywhere so we have a fixed weakness a frozen weakness which is not running anywhere so now we can even bring in the king because it's not like anyone's gonna get him it's not like that rook and that queen's ever gonna get to me so the king can be more active because of my spatial advantage once again and now their rooks are tied down to defense we can get more space with a5 so now we're breaking through with our pieces and our pawns are helping us get through that pawn chain right so the queen can create problems and the game is almost over because this rook and this queen who are too busy with this pawn cannot help the poor rook against the queen and the queen's a bit more powerful 
in comparison. So when the queen finally comes in, it turns out that the black rook has no squares. And because the pawns weren't pushed far enough, they couldn't create any problems and couldn't create any counterplay against all the space on the king side and this protected pass pawn on f6. So guys, remember, in the middle game, pieces need space, right? In the end game, it's not that important. It's more of a question of how close the pawns are to promotion, which is also important in a way. But in the middle game, if the pawns can secure space for the pieces, that means our pieces will be faster to move than theirs, as white showed in this game.